Now I'm going to talk about the fiction book. And the question is, uh, if you could hang out with one character in the book, who would it be and why? What would you do together? And my fiction book is Behold the Dreamers. It is Imbolo Ambrose's first novel detailing the life of two distinct families living in the US. Vince Clark Edwards' first son happened to be my favorite character in the book. He is a student of law at Columbia University and a character that resembles his father physically but harbors thought that is different from his parents. Vince sees a road from a different angle and possesses a trait that makes him unique and a good example. Unlike his father, he is a person of integrity. He values happiness over material wealth, which makes him a character I want to hang out with. I adore Wins' confidence in choosing a path that he believes is right. Wins refused to go to the same corporate path his father had set for him, and instead chose a path that will bring him happiness. He believes his father is job to be marred with corrupt dealings and dishonesty, and act he distant from himself. This makes him a good person to associate with. He is the kind of friend that would advise you against pursuing a goal of material wealth and social prestige, and instead encourage you to choose a path that will provide you with a personal fulfillment and peace of mind. Given the chance to spend the day with Vince, I will gladly hang out with him in the library, a restaurant, or spend the day together in the reserve. While there, I will try to learn as much as possible from him, especially on matters of courage to choose his path of life, instead of orienting his goals on his parents' expectation. Vince is somebody who defied the norms of society. He would have chosen the life of social preeminence and material wealth, but he knew better. Vince foresaw social prestige and material wealth as fertility and instead of chose personal fulfillment. Being that I live in a society that defines success in terms of materialism, I would love to ask Vince about the principle that keep him focused on his life goals. I would also want to know how he managed uh, ha to handle the pressure from not only his parents, but also everyone who thought that he had chosen the wrong path, a decision that was later praised by his father, the one person who never wanted him to go to that direction. Surprisingly, Vince happened to be a good example even his father who decided to reorient his life around his family. In addition, I would love to spend time with him in a reserved place that he had always dreamed of. I would want to understand uh, more about his plan of building a retreat center for American executives and, if possible, help him with the ideas of the project. This will be a chance to observe and examine a character whose life I have only read about ink and paper. Although I am aware of, it will be almost impossible to gain complete knowledge about him in the real world. It will be a faint opportunity to ask him questions that I would otherwise not have asked while reading the book. Next, I will talk about the nonfiction book, which is called the Designing Your Life by Bill Bernard and Dave Evans. The question is, what is one lesson you take away from the book? How would you integrate uh, that lesson into your life now and how about in the future? The book Designing Your Life by Bill Bernard and Dave Evans is a very good book to everyone pondering about what is next in their life. The book is very clear that something has to be next. Therefore, someone should design life purposely and with intention instead of just letting it take place. The book offers us the best lesson concerning life in general. Brennan and Evans advocate for usage of design strategies in enlightening us on how we should take control of our own lives. In their definition, a well-designed life is a portfolio of adventures, experience, achievement, satisfaction, or failures that taught us crucial lessons, hardship that made us stronger and enable us to identify ourselves better. Bernard and Evans suggest that people should find the right problem to resolve and raise concerns that people take too much time to solve the wrong issue within the outlook. This is what they describe a situation where students become unlucky since they are smart and spend about 10 years down the path as unhappy individuals, which they term as success disasters. They are left considering the students that fail first 
but did another thing to make them happier as the lucky ones. They also teach cautiously against attempting to resolve gravity issue. A thing that is a life fact is like gravity and hence an issue that cannot be resolved. Hence, it is crucial not to be stuck in an issue that you can succeed in changing. I'm happy about five simple things that they advise me about how I can better design my life. According to Bernard and Evans, the first step is being curious. Leslie has indicated that curiosity is crucial for our brains in learning new things. The two also warned against having a belief that what someone major in a university is what they will pursue in life. This has really sharpened my mind and made it open to execute other things outside my course. The second step is trying stuff. One of the fundamental elements of design thinking is prototyping. Like in any organizational change, experimentation is a very crucial element of designing personal life. The third step is reframing problems. Different studies have indicated that framing things can play a significant role in determining whether we can start or procrastinate things. Through reframing of our problems, we can view our issues through a new light and get the appropriate solutions. Fourthly, we have to understand that this is process. We have to under uh, consider that it is more about the outcome uh, that the process of achieving it. Focusing on the process more than the outcome will enable us to obtain something from each eventuality, whether good or bad. Lastly, Brennan and Evan support having an open approach. They suggest that designing and invention are more and more collaborative processes, and so is designing of life. Just we should seek help to get a new idea and also get feedback from others. This approach is very helpful to me personally. I can treat life in a more improvisational way. Since the approach is experiential and allows failure as an element of the process, this gives me more confidence to handle the course I am taking. I am more equipped to be more focused and be a better manager of what I am doing today to achieve my intended outcome. The most critical lesson from this book is that the only failure in life is settling for a life that makes me unhappy. I am therefore using this sensible advice to view life differently. In the future, I will not be stuck in one thing. For instance, if the career I am taking today will not make me happy, I will be willing to do something else that will make me happy and satisfied. The book equips me as a life designer. While fear and avoid problems, I will seek them out. Where others will consider failure and surrender, I will prototype solutions until I get the best possible solution. Through the application of a designer's unique approach to my life aspects, I will attain more long-lasting happiness and fulfillment. Designing your life offers a logical approach to think about life and career choices. Compared to other career approaches, Bernard's and Evans' approach is uniquely helpful. The design philosophy provides a series of particular activities organized to generate many interesting potential actions and plans towards the achievement of one's goals. The book clarifies that there is no perfect job or perfect path. People have to look for alternatives. In short, they must prototype and, and design. People must pursue a specific path, consti constantly checking in and opening the next chapter. So next, I will be talking about the words, inside, out, and back again. And the question is, how would you rewrite the ending of the story if you could? Why would you change it? The story inside, out, and back again ends with the family acknowledgement of the father's death after the loss at the Amazon stone from the ring and the celebration of Ted, where mother predicts assimilation in America. The character's life was radically turned inside out because they left everything they possessed and loved in Vietnam, but they gradually start going back again. Despite harsh bullying at school, mother's difficult work, cowboy's disapproving wife, it is difficult to imagine another ending of the story. 
As long as the offer largely describes her escape from Vietnam as a girl and the challenges she faced in assimilation to the new setting. Nevertheless, one may imagine that would happen if her story had a different ending. The family's return to Vietnam would be a step back in their lives, observing the slow but important change. Therefore, I think of a more positive ending when the loss of the atmosphere stone predicts that Ha's father is alive and finds the family since the second part of the title would acquire a new meaning of the family renewal. To begin with, Lai's ending may be interpreted as rather gloomy with the confirmation of father's death and the necessary assimilation in the upcoming year. So a sudden appearance of Ha's father may add a positive connotation and give hope for a better future. Undoubtedly, it is not a fairy tale with a predictable happy end. However, a father's resurrection does not imply that the family will live happily ever after they face a challenge together. At the beginning of the story, Brother Huang criticized the mother's intention to sell the amethyst ring, which father brought from America calling it the last tangible remnant of love. At the end, the woman loses precious stone, through it might be interpreted uh, as the lack of necessity to carry remnants of love. Because the war came to the end, and the man finally managed to find his family with the help of Uncle Sun, Ha's wish will come true. Her father appears at school, hold out his hand for her. The girl's classmates will unlikely change their negative attitude towards her ethnicity after they see her father because the reason for bullying her is because of her inferior ethnicity, not because she has no father. However, she will have a strong hand to hold her at the moment of despair and the man who can give her security and hope that American food, language and culture may become a pleasant thing. Furthermore, the father's appearance may give a new meaning to the title, implying that the characters may gradually come back to the previous life in a safe environment. With the phrase, back again, lies means that Ha's family start to go back to the normal life, after the horrors of the war at home and days in the open sea, waiting for rescue team. But the girl's father is still alive and succeeds in finding his wife and children in Alabama. The life of the characters is back again, to the time when they live together in Vietnam. The real family is finally together, and this event may be the start of their long but confident adjustment to the new country. They will together pray for the children's successful study, parents work to financially support the, the family, and the mother smile after 10 years of hope and believe that her husband is still alive. Together. It will be easier to cope with the mix of the old and new lives, assimilating in American country, but preserving national identity. To sum up, the story's ending cannot be written because this is the way she saw her characters and wanted to tell the world her experience as a Vietnamese refugee. Nevertheless, one may be curious about different scenarios of the stories whereas Inside Out and Back Again would acquire a new meaning if Ha's father appeared alive at the end to fulfill the girl's wish, provide a positive meaning for thousands of immigrants who may notice a glimpse of hope and show that the character's life may go back again.